Super excited to have Gaetano Dinardi on the program, marketing advisor. Known Gaetano for a long time. He's worked at Nextiva, Aura, also, yeah. Among the companies he's worked at and helped, Nextiva, Aura, Outreach, Gong. Um, who am I missing? That's super. Uh, pipe uh, Drive. Pipe Drive, Sales Hacker, stuff Basically, like that. a ton of huge names in yeah. B2B and B2C, as we'll get into, yeah. is, is in your portfolio. Super smart marketer, growth marketer. And what I particularly like about your approach, and we were talking about it a little bit before this, is you you do have a ton of background at SEO, but I think you come it from a lens of just overall growth in a nice way that resonates with non SEO people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, thanks for the intro, Ross. Yeah, yeah. Uh, super happy to be here. My first time in Austin, actually. So oh, nice. Hopefully yeah. not the last. No, no it won't be. I, this is a very nice city. So yeah. I already had my first barbecue. I went to uh, Terry Black's. <laughs> Did he feel bad afterwards? Felt horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. That's that's what happened. As so you could you come, you have the barbecue, and then you realize you feel very bad. Yeah. and stop having it. I felt terrible. I'm like, yo, I got to take a nap. I need like a gallon <laughs> of water to wash down all the salt. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> nice. but yeah, thanks for having me and thanks for the kind intro. Um, yeah, you know, like I worked in B2B most of my life. Um, got into B2C more recently, but uh, I've been kind of framing SEO. Um, not just as like an awareness and educator, but mm -hmm. also as a way to like capture demand. That's that seems to be like a hot buzz phrase nowadays, you know. Because <laughs> um, I think like marketing in B two B specifically is kind of seeing a bit of a separation between capturing demand and creating and educating and building awareness. So I, I've been you know positioning SEO as a way to kind of do it all. But you know if you if you separate the intent clearly with your content strategy, it can be impactful. So you. I actually just got this question this week for the first time from someone who was like, okay. do you think SEO, like how can we, can we create demand, not just capture demand? Obviously, we were also talking about the great people at Refine Labs who are talking about that <laughs> a lot. Yeah. How, how does search or can it create demand as well? Yeah. So um, when I think about things that are purely creating demand, like when I think about the term even create demand. I think about like Kanye's Yeezy sneakers or like a new musician that's got to get on the scene. The, you know, like SEO is not really creating demand in my in my mind, it, but it's more like uh, staying in front of the audiences that are not yet ready to buy. You know, being on uh, top and middle of funnel when they're not in a buying mode, you uh -huh. can you can use content strategy to you know deliver you know great information and and content when they're not thinking about buying. Uh, to me, so th that is more that. about like demand generation, you know, staying on top of mind when they're not in a buying mode, which is most of the time. Yeah, that makes sense. It's yeah. still still relevant in the conversation, of course, which probably is also what the Refine Labs guys are saying as well. You still have to be on message in some yeah. way. Yeah, to... I don't I don't know about like if, if there's any great examples of like creating demand with SEO. Like when I think about companies that have actually created demand or built a category, mm -hmm. you know, it's like Gong, Drift, um, you know, they, they put out these narratives and they wrote books and they had social campaigns and like it was a lot of channels, you know, events, offsite media that was really like working together to, to really build a new thing. So yeah. I don't know if SEO can be used as that, but like what I do think is you can uh, build content for those things that don't have search demand yet. And then as they grow, you'll be there. So you'll be ahead of the game. Like, so a, an example is actually Pep Laya, um, Winter. Mm -hmm. They do message testing. It's not really a thing yet, but as they start hammering it on social, as they start hammering it on events and other channels, you know, people yeah, will start bro. searching for it. So you might as well own that term in search before it becomes a big thing. Yeah, and that's one of the best places to be. Like you can attract links, all those things. Obviously, you become the, the thought leader for that. I mean, HubSpot doing inbound marketing is a right. very core example right. of that, right? Right. <laughs> and now yeah. everyone thinks of them. So people initially hated them for that. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. So what do you think about like the HubSpot inbound marketing thing? Do you think it kind of like lost steam? Do you think it's kind of fizzling out? Or uh, I mean, it's still. I I guess in terms of usage of the term, I I don't know. How, I haven't been following it too much. We yeah. still hear it a decent amount. Yeah. Um, I don't know how have sh I'm such an SEO guy. I don't <laughs> concern too much. But how how do you think about it? Yeah, I think it's evolved quite a lot. You uh -huh. know, I think like um, inbound can be social. You know, inbound can be a lot of different things outside of just like SEO. It could be YouTube. 
You know what I mean? So I think it has evolved, but um, yeah, I think they hit a wave. You know, they struck the hammer while it was like Perfectly, really hot. Yeah, yeah and um, now it just kind of is what it is. Yeah. yeah, they're. I mean, HubSpot's still huge. Obviously, they've matured over time. I think Brian, the CEO, stepped down, and um, still a great company. I, we hear about a ton of people transitioning their CMS right. all the time. Right. So it's working. Right. Um, <laughs> but went on some great tangents there. Where we originally were slating this conversation to go was your background at Aura. Yeah. Um, could you give people a quick, like two second introduction or for context for, um, the rest of the, yeah. 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 Cool. So, um, Aura's like tagline is creating a safer internet for everyone. Okay. Um, I know that sounds like kind of fluffy and nice, but, um, when you, you know, peel off the, the layers of the onion, essentially it's identity theft protection and internet security tools for consumers. Cool. So you... Uh, one of the posts that caught my eye from you uh, on LinkedIn is you talked about the case study of growth that you generated from them, some specific things you did. A lot of good stuff there. Um, we'll link to it in the show notes for sure. Cool. Something that particularly resonated with me that I thought was interesting was you were like, I believe you said 20 articles per month, no exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's that's pretty cool, that gusto yeah. Uh, yeah. with that. Definitely with you, like there's definitely volume need to yeah. see success. Like how did you come to that number? Uh, yeah. What was the basis of that idea? Yeah. So like, um, we, we decided actually on 15, um, and 15 was a number that we decided on because we felt it was a number we could run with without, um, burning ourselves out. Mm -hmm. So you know, you want to, you don't want to. That's your, fast still. Yeah. yeah, that, that, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's a high, you Volume, know, velocity yeah. of publishing, yeah. but we felt like we could run at that pace without burning ourselves out. We took some inspiration from uh, a site called do not pay. Okay. So, so yeah. So do not pay is a pretty interesting, uh, SEO case study. If you want to check that out sometime, but they, they scaled massively, uh, with a lot of content really fast. So we took some of that playbook, but we, we decided 15 is good because um, we could run at that pace without burning ourselves out. And it would be good enough to give us the velocity of traffic that we wanted to to grow at. Okay, nice. Uh, yeah. You made me think something I like previously did back when we were more link focused. Now we're more holistic uh, with our approach. Is I'd actually look at the link velocity and try to reverse engineer that to okay. make a growth argument. Nice. Are you? Did you? It sounds like you sort. Did you see that your competitors were growing by thirty articles or something like that? Or okay, so let me give you some more context, <laughs> and I think you'll you'll appreciate this. So our competitors were slow moving corporate turtles. Mm -hmm. So LifeLock, you know, being the the most well known, but many others in that same kind of legacy internet security tools for consumer right. category. Um, and what we found is that um, their, their tremendous brand strength and authority and their domain was able to carry them very far, uh, even if they only publish one or two articles a week um, or maybe five or six a month, something like that. And thin, you know, basic level content, um, you know, your classic listicles and stuff like that, yeah, yeah. 10, 10 things you should do to blah, blah, blah. Um, and for them, it worked. But we realized, like, all right, we have nowhere near the amount of authority as them. We're a pretty unknown brand at this point. Um, and we don't have any content. There's nothing. There's just product pages, uh, pricing page, homepage, you know, some feature core pages, stuff, yeah. core stuff. Yeah, there's zero, absolutely zero content. So we felt like we had to kind of run fast to catch up in order to, you know, play ball with the big boys. Um, and that was just our thinking around it. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> How do you go? I'm sure your background helped in credibility of getting to going from zero to 20 or 15, essentially, mm -hmm. what was the justification of the process that allowed you to go from zero to 15 for those people that are only doing two before? Was it? Yeah. 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 So, all right. Um, I remember this very clearly. I spent all of December of just doing keyword research and planning out content. So it was just me uh, doing all the strategy, basically one month heads down. And I, I was moving lightning fast. I was listening to sales calls. I was studying competitors. I was doing everything I could to figure out, like, how are we going to strike back, um, build some traffic, and not get stuck because we're, you know, targeting topics that are too competitive? Because this is an insane space. Like, not only do you have your direct product competitors, but you have CNBC, you have FTC.gov, you have IdentityTheft.gov, SocialSecurityAdministration.gov. So you're you're battling in some really deep, muddy waters. Mm -hmm. So I had to figure out, like, how are we going to prioritize topics where we can actually win, uh, being a site that's 
you know, pretty low authority. I think, you know, Ahrefs domain rating like 70 and uh, Maz like in the 40s or something like that. Okay. So, you know, not like zero, but definitely not, you know, in comparison to life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Forget it. So, um, yeah. So basically to summarize that point, it's I spent all of, Dece- of December uh, preparing for this attack. Um, and without doing that, I don't think we, we would have been able to run because we, we knew exactly what we we're going to do, exactly how we were going to do it. So we had all that mapped out. Smart. Yeah. In terms of like this publishing volume. So it's a, just to clarify, you were doing 15 and sometimes 20 or yeah, 15 mostly to, 15. 15 to 20. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And uh, if from your posts, you the way it was described of how you were creating this was essentially, and correct me if I'm wrong, for the most part, kind of a freelancer army that you leverage. I was yes. like thinking about this in <laughs> sprinting, moving fast, freelancer army. Yes. What was the team infrastructure? Like, how did you make that work in practice? Oh, yeah. Okay. So it was me and one uh, content marketer as like the core pieces and then an army of freelancers. Exactly. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so we uh, found people who were writing about identity theft, but more in like a journalistic style and we just taught them how to write seo and through our editorial mechanism we were able to take like their knowledge and and writing um kind of how do i put it they're they're writing quality because these are good quality writers and then just train them on our style um and then we took some we we tried you know some classic b2b content writers who like you know just wanted to try some stuff we you know we did some experimentation mm-hmm. I'll, I'll be honest not all writers could get it we had to cut you know quite a few but um yeah we just basically went through trial and error with writers and and the the structure was me one content marketer uh one line editor okay uh, for like grammatical accuracy um uh, content structuring that Important. type of thing yeah yep and um we once we got into a good groove we had about 10 freelance writers okay nice yeah. it's kind of the how long did it take you to get ramp up to that volume uh, I would say it took – so here's another important uh, uh, piece is that um, I personally wrote a couple to show examples of what I expect. Okay. And that was key. So also the other content marketer, um, I'll shout him out, Jory McKay. He's a beast. He's okay. incredible. Probably the, <laughs> probably the best content marketer like I've ever worked with. He, he's, he's so good. Um, anyway, so me and him uh, wrote pieces ourselves. Um, and then – we showed that as an example of what we expect okay. in terms of structure, in terms of you know in depth, comprehensiveness, quality, all that. Um, and we had, and once we felt that that these writers were going to be in it for the long haul, we had them like talk to subject matter experts on a team, talk to our product marketing team, um, listen to sales calls, stuff like that. So cool. Yeah. When you talked about like taking their expertise, subject matter expertise, and aligning to search, I'm sure you've heard varying ways people do that, like give yeah. an outline. Yeah. What were you doing that? What was your yeah. process? Did you give an outline for every post? Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah. Had to, had yeah. to, because this, this industry is so nuanced. Like for example, um, if you lose your social security card, the intent is very different, uh, versus my social security card was stolen. Right. So, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, or, uh-huh. um, I want to know about these kinds of scams versus I actually did get scammed. Right. So, and- so that is, you know, little nuance that writers may not pick up on. So also the style of content, what is needed for this? Is it a how-to? Is it a listicle? Is it a teardown? Is it a, you know, whatever. So we did in-depth posts for, uh, briefs, excuse me, for every single uh, piece that was assigned. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you talked about what the right number was to not burn out. So to clarify, you had an editor on staff with the full t- content marketers full-time you're describing? Full-time. full-time. Okay. Yeah. And you're hitting about 15 for other people in other content marketing programs that are potentially considering a model like yours. Did that feel like you're capping out? Is that like a capacity number you think, or for a, for manager? Like, uh, yeah. uh, so, so yeah. it's a very good question. I think, um, I could have pushed it a little harder if I wanted to turn down the quality scale a little bit, if I wanted to just ship, 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 and just maybe, you know, spend less time on editorial or maybe just instead of going all out on a brief and telling them exactly what I expect to see in the headers, you know, maybe let them figure that out. So I decided to go a little bit more heavily on the quality control 
and not worry so much about like velocity, velocity, velocity. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I could have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is too, like in identity theft, you got to be on point. Uh-huh. It's so hard. Like the information's got to be right. Um, you know, you, you're talking about the almost like your money, your life category. So like you can't really give flimsy or wrong information. So it's, it's got to be correct. And so um, because we knew that there's a lot at stake with that component, um, we decided not to try and go 30, 40 a month. Let's keep it at like 15, 20. We're good, you know, with this output. Um, we're in a good rhythm, good groove, you know, and let's just keep it there. Yeah, that makes sense. I yeah. think that's a, that's a pretty good volume in my experience as well. We've seen managers across clients, yeah, sometimes push up from there, but it gets tight. Uh, you hear about yeah. burnout and things like that yeah. for sure. Yeah, exactly. The other thing that crossed my mind was like, hey, we've got like 250 topics identified. What happens when we, you know, hit them all? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like if we do fifty a month, we're gonna, you know, yeah, updates. It, up, then it's gonna be all yeah. about updating and yeah. playing defense. But uh, this is a good point, though. Uh, the do not pay strategy. <clears throat> we saw a lot of templatized content. Hmm. Okay, so um, what that what that actually led to for them in many cases was like for the very competitive stuff, they got kind of clipped at like the bottom of page one. But for the less competitive stuff, they were able to rank much higher. Okay. So, yeah. So we kind of realized, like, if we just kind of go scale, 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 and not worry so much about quality and just pump, um, <clears throat> we may get stuck because it may not be good enough. So spending that a little bit extra time on on quality to try and compete, to me, felt worth it. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. trade-offs for all of those things. Of exactly. Course. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Probably exactly. depends on the keyword. Like, was there... Um, for those unaware, I think, yeah, there was things like scam for like Walmart scam. Yeah. Was there a huge long tail of that? Is that kind of what you're describing? I, yeah, I don't know if there, that existed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was definitely a lot of long tail in there. Like so many variations of like um, Walmart gift card scams, mm-hmm. Walmart uh, shopping scams, Walmart Instagram scams, uh, you know, all those kinds of long tail that we got soaked up by the big Walmart scam page. Um, but we we also started doing like um, I got scammed on Facebook Marketplace. What do I do? Oh, okay, Versus yeah. like here's all the kinds of scams that are out there on Facebook Marketplace, which you know it's all kind of the same scams at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, so sense. we we actually started shifting a little bit after we listened to sales calls, like people saying, "Hey, I got scammed on Zelle," or "I got scammed on Cash." Uh, I got scammed on Cash App. Can I recover my money? What do I do about this? How do oh, I protect okay. my identity? So. Yeah, we did a mix of all that. <laughs> makes sense. Makes yeah, sense. Yeah. So when you were taking the sprint approach, newer startup, mm-hmm. what was a common timeline or question people, how long does this stuff take to rank? What did you see mm-hmm. or and or what was your kind of process for prioritization early? Yeah, yeah. So in terms of how long it took to rank, I mean, I'll be honest, in the beginning, we saw some indexation challenges, like being a brand new site with not too much content. It took a while before stuff got indexed. And I had to make a decision like, all right, do I just wait? Do I try to, you know, add more links? Do I do the 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 sneaky trick of changing the URL and resubmitting it for index? <laughs> so <laughs> um, whatever it takes. Yeah, yeah. But ultimately, what I learned is you just gotta wait. You just yeah. gotta wait. Um, there was one instance where Google, I guess, interpreted some content to be too similar to existing content. Okay. So for that one, I actually did do the sneaky change the URL trick and resubmit for indexing, and it worked like right away. Um, (laughs) but in general terms, yeah, in general terms, like we would see ourselves ranking within like less than a month for some pretty, pretty competitive stuff. Even like, or like, what was your authority at that? Uh, it was, you know, probably in Maz DA, like 40, 42, 43, something like that. Um, but really long tail. So like, for example, how to tell if your identity has been stolen. (laughs) <laughs> yeah okay yeah, you know yeah. so so stuff like that is like extremely long tail but you'd be shocked at how competitive qualified audience. yeah very yeah. qualified audience that was actually the very first piece i wrote that was the example and i wrote that myself because this is another important piece my identity was stolen okay and, so you, and yeah you know, and so the I, exactly so the irony of all this is that i was interviewing for this job at the same time that my identity got stolen <laughs> the, the irony of that is just unbelievable that must have resonated it, yeah. That I felt like that was like fate. fate. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was actually a horrible experience. Um, I got hacked really bad. Um, they uh, blocked me out of my Gmail. They blocked me out of my Apple ID. It was terrifying. Wow. Yeah, I had a. So I learned a lot from this experience, and so it only seemed. What's fitting. What's the two second tips you have for people to prevent that? 
Okay, so two-factor authentication <laughs> on everything. I was going to say that, yeah. Yeah, avoid SMS two-factor authentication if possible. So use oh, an authenticator app. Hmm. Yeah, so Google Authenticator. Uh, Microsoft also has one. So try and use an app, um, especially for crypto. Like the biggest thing I would say is like don't keep too much crypto sitting in the exchange. Like move it off to like a hardware wallet. Yeah. Because I was foolish and left a little bit too much crypto and they got in there. Oh, they got your crypto. They got, they got my yeah. Ethereum. Yeah, That's they got rough. me. Not not for like a devastating, like my life is ruined amount, yeah. but an, an, enough of an amount to say, oh my God, this is horrible. It's painful. It was it was painful. Yeah, yeah. So um, <clears throat> so all that kind of just was fate. And um, I don't really know where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry to lead you on a train there. Yeah. Uh, but an actually interesting part of that and- in terms of prioritization and topic selection yeah. is your overall content strategy. It was interesting looking at your topics. Not everything maybe would like hit you as square obvious, which I think shows you did a great job there in terms of unique topic selection. Mm -hmm. And like, you could probably do the stupid, not stupid, but the obvious things. Right. How did you come to this unique content strategy for, or, uh, yeah how so, can people do that yeah 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 so i think there are so many this was a tough project you know like there were so many variables involved in this so one is like how do we increase the authority of of the site by you know producing some topics that'll get links and how do we also at the same time uh balance that with topics where the product can be uh displayed as a viable solution to the to the problem that we're discussing okay uh, on the on the content mm -hmm. So I had to do a mix of like top of funnel stuff, bottom funnel stuff, middle funnel stuff. I couldn't just hammer it all with like the most bottom of funnel terms because it was just far too competitive. But over time, even now I check back, we rank for things like family identity theft, child identity theft, uh, spousal identity theft, um, a family member opened a credit card in my name. So th those extremely long tail ones I found actually by listening to sales calls. Um, it's really hard to get some of those insights through keyword research tools. Yeah. But if you're, this is an example of where maybe like keyword research uh, in its like standard classic way it may not be effective. Let's say you go to Ahrefs, you just type in identity theft. It's going to spit back all these things that are like way too hard to rank for. So it's not going to give you like spousal. You know, it's, Makes sense. It, it's not going to give you audience. the qualified audience stuff. Yeah. You got to dig for some of that mm -hmm. stuff. Even like my mom stole my identity. Should I press <laughs> wow. charges? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. My dad's, oh, this is the sickest one. Um, identity theft of deceased person. There was a huge spike of that during COVID. Oh, wow. That's yeah. Rough. It was, it was horrible. Um, so I, so those were the heavy hitter topics. Um, the things that were like kind of fluffy and light, but we did for links is like PPP loan fraud. Okay. Yeah, okay. So yeah, like yeah. big, huge topic. We got a lot of links from stuff like that. Um, yeah. So I have this rubric. Uh, I borrowed it from Ahrefs actually, but like the idea is like, if you can make your product like a direct solution to the problem, it's a very high priority. If it's something like PPP loan fraud, where you cannot talk about the solution at all, then it's a zero. So three, two, one, zero. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So yeah. your identity theft specifically, so PPP loan is not identity theft. Yeah. So that's why it didn't make sense. In yeah, yeah. But it's, it's a top funnel link asset. Top funnel link asset. Worthy, it's adjacent. Yeah, exactly. Ish. It's adjacent audience, right? Like uh, if they're learning about loan fraud and scams, because bank bank scams, uh, loan scams, um, targeting the older demographic was like a big thing we saw too. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So. So you mentioned. Uh, before we started rolling that an aspect of this that might be relevant and is particular to my interests is the ADA model. Yeah. Uh, so for the people <laughs> who are not aware, attention, interest, desire, action, yeah. common copywriting formula. Mm -hmm. You just got off uh, CXL Live's conference here in Austin with a take on that. What What yeah. is that? How does that tie in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I basically challenged that model, mm -hmm. you know, because how do you get inside uh, and decide of a customer? Of how am I, How do I know if this is interest? <laughs> you know, it's like kind of yeah. hard, you know, especially if your identity hasn't been stolen. Like my identity was stolen, so I know, but um, it's hard to like get into that, you know, mindset. Yeah, you can kind of tie certain things to keyword like formulas, like uh, decision might be how much does X cost or is is identity theft protection really worth it? Okay. Okay. Um, we decided to take a different approach and use that kind of rubric I just talked about where like if your product can be mentioned um, as like the core solution, then it's a very high priority. So I'll just actually read off some examples to you, um, Ross, just sure. so, so this can come to life for the audience too. 
but how to protect your child from identity theft. That's a three. Beca okay. Because it's really hard to do that without Aura. It's pretty so hard to So it's a do. scoring matrix you just sort of described. It's a scoring matrix I okay. described, right? So here's that's like a high three, right? A two would be something like where your product is helpful, but it's not essential to solving the problem. So for example, I got scammed on Facebook Marketplace because Aura can help you solve parts of that problem, but it cannot guarantee you know protection 100% of the time for something okay. like that, right? So then a, a one, a level below that, is where your product can only be mentioned sparingly or as a minor part of the recovery process. So for example, how do scammers steal credit card numbers? Okay. Okay, that's, that's more of um, an awareness and educator because people may not be aware of all the ways scammers would steal credit card numbers, but it feeds kind of into the Aura product because we can alert you if suspicious activity is happening uh, in your credit card. Cool. Yeah. Someone on our team might have subconsciously seen something. I don't know where you <laughs> originally brainstormed it. So we we have something called keyword opposition to benefit analysis. Oh, yeah. This is great. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, so it's traffic value against difficulty. Right. But one thing we've done recently that we realized was a failability of this is traffic value obviously is relatively arbitrary to each individual business mm -hmm. and who's monetizing mm -hmm. that topic. Mm -hmm. So what the PPP loan fraud could make a shit ton of money for someone, but if we prioritize blindly, we wouldn't that wouldn't be worth 50k right. a month. Right. So we actually also created a one to three score. Ah. Which is called relevancy score. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, relevancy score. Yeah. yeah. And just multiply most relevant stuff by three. Beautiful. Less relevant by two. And least relevant by one. To that's like amazing. Get further. Uh, yeah. It's kind of funny we came to the exact same <laughs> score. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's amazing. And that, I think the PPP loan is like a perfect example of like where that may even have a high cost per click. Because mm -hmm. I think the traffic value thing comes from like the estimated cost per click, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Yes. Okay. So something like that <clears throat> will have huge traffic value, but like you said, low relevancy. Uh, you'd be surprised to see that some of these things that were extremely bottom of funnel for us had like very low to zero CPC. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even in B2C market, I mean, I see yeah, that a lot yeah. in B2B markets yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, but B2C uh, is more obscure sometimes. <clears throat> yeah. As well, interesting, yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what I've realized over time is like B2B, my, uh, this is my hypothesis, the longer yeah. sales cycle might mean some, less PPC might be done on some of these terms mm -hmm. and it underrepresents the kind of true value of those terms. Cor yeah, this yeah. is this is correct. The other thing <clears throat> is that a lot of these SERPs that we found, like especially for social security, like didn't have ads. And um, there could be a lot of reasons why that is. Maybe mm. companies don't see it being a commercially valuable SERP. Maybe it's too in in information, educa education, whatever. Or maybe conf consumers are just confused. You know, they don't know. Like a lot of times what we, what we actually found is people calling Aura saying, yeah, I need a new social security uh, number or a new social security card. How do we do that? And we're like, well, you just go to the social security administration <laughs> website. I could see that based on the query types you just described. Like yeah, yeah. A lot of, being exactly, yeah. exactly. So a lot of confusion in the market with some of that stuff. But, um, it, you know, the other thing that was tough about Aura was it was like VPN because we offered a VPN, mm -hmm. but you can't go to market for that. It's just, it's a bloodbath. So, you know, we had to just basically, oh, okay. you know, cross sell with VPN. Makes sense. But like, eventually the executives were like, yeah, so what's our content strategy for VPN? How do we go to market for VPN? And I'm like, yeah, you don't really want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, being like an all-in-one solution that has like password manager, that's another one. Dude, password manager is Super the most competitive, competitive shit yeah. I've ever seen in my life. It's like even worse than identity theft. Worse than CRM, worse than like all that. Yeah, <laughs> password manager is insane. That so, term, yeah, I've yeah, and all content it. around it is just like, uh, yeah, password generator. Oh god, yeah, yeah very very Intense. tough, very tough. Yeah, so VPN password manager, um, also like dark web monitoring, dark web alerts. You know, okay, that's also extremely competitive. You have like a lot of cybersecurity companies producing content on that. Wow. Um, yeah. So basically, no, there's danger lurking around every corner. <laughs> in this. Is what we're learning? Yeah. 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 Like uh, this gave me confidence actually as a marketer because like, damn, if I could compete in something like this, that's so difficult, then, you know, I, I guess I've kind of- You can figure it out. I can figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like the New York City mindset. Like if I can make it here, I can make it anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> if you can make it yeah, an identity did, theft. You yeah. Yeah. You nice. Can, you can do well. Yeah. So a unique thing, uh, not unique, but was curious your take on it in terms of your content strategy, something I saw in some of your articles. There's a good amount of video. Present. Oh, yeah. And obviously there's different ways to go about doing that in terms of 
cracking the nut of developing video. It can be very expensive depending on how you do that. How, how did you get that done and how do you maybe suggest people think about that? Yeah. So, um, I think Kevin Indig put shout out to Kevin, man. He put out a great, uh, article recently on like how to think about video for SEO. And like the main takeaway was like, it's an education tool. Okay. You know, it's like, I think executives, when they think about video, they're like, Oh, what's the ROI? You know, and it's, it's extremely hard to just explain to them that like, look, you know, the question I always pose back is like, have you ever watched the YouTube video and bought something? Probably not, you know, <laughs> unless it's like an affiliate play or like, um, I don't even know how those those uh, Wix and Grammarly videos, how they convert. I mean, they keep doing them, so maybe they convert well. But um, yeah, the, the point of this whole play was like education. It was like, let's stand out in the mobile SERPs, because if you search right now, family identity theft, you'll see our guy with the video, uh, with the little video thumbnail and and... You know, I actually asked like a couple people who don't even like think about identity theft, like which result would you click on out of this whole list? And they're like, yeah, probably the one with the video. Yeah. So so we thought of, about it in that way. Um, and we basically just mirrored every single blog topic with a video. Every single blog topic? Pretty much, yeah. Every okay. single one. If you look at the Aura YouTube channel right now, there's hundreds of videos on there. To the point you're comfortable sharing, like what is the cost model of that look like? How did you... Yeah, it, it, it. It, it, so the company was very, th this is the thing that like, I really am thankful for. Like the company was on board with like, look, we got to educate. Yeah, they, they knew, they knew that they knew like, look, we're only going to win if we can educate. Everything can't be, you know, measured like performance marketing, direct response, you know, type stuff. We can't, we, we can't <laughs> gotta just, do we, we got to do some brand building and awareness, right? We're brand new here. Like, and brand is so important in consumer marketing. So um, they took some actually, so this made it easier too to justify the video costs is that they took some massive swings uh, like um, Minnesota Timberwolves NBA basketball partnership. God knows how much they spent on that. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know. Um, yeah, I see all those cybersecurity companies. I'm a Warriors fan, like advertising. Okay. Go Warriors. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miami Heat. Yeah, let's yeah, go. yeah, yeah. We see, we see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, sorry to interrupt you. No, nah, no, nah, it's all yeah. good. So um yeah, so it was costly. It was it was around like a thousand bucks a video, something like that. Okay, yeah, that's not actually that bad at so, all to me. It wasn't that bad because we had like one dude that would just we would give him a script. We actually had two video producers. So this is another thing. Companies I think would struggle massively if they tried to hire in-house video producers to be a part of the marketing roster. I don't know many like companies who have done that successfully. I think maybe Zendesk and like some of the big boys might might have done it. Uh -huh. But like in the in the fast growing like you know growth startup world, like I just don't see that happening very well. So we just realized like let's find the best content creators out there and just have them focus on this subject matter. So we found this guy Upton Saidi. He's like all over the place. Like he goes to Dubai and films like stuff that's happening there. Like he his job, his life is literally video content. He's like a video content creator. Okay. Uh, another guy uh, from Arizona, Max. Um, that's like his life is video production in this vertical or just generally uh, different, just different oh, verticals. Okay. Yeah. But what we decided was they don't need to know the subject matter too well. All they need to do is be able to like understand the script, deliver the points on camera, and let's just let's just pump, let's just go. Okay. So yeah. do you give them? Do you like bring them into your office if you have an office? Yeah. To shoot and just knock out a ton of them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Either either we would go to some studio like like where we are now and just mm. like knock out like twenty in a day. Okay. Um. Or yeah, I mean that's basically the way we did it. Yeah. So is a most of them are talking head videos effectively. Almost all were talking head videos. Uh, there were some videos that were like, we went on the street and we said like, hey, we can, I bet you we can guess your password to like random people. Uh, th that was actually cool for social. <laughs> and, and I see that on YouTube all the time now. Yeah. It's like, ask Joe how he made his money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like Noah Kagan and those guys. Yeah, he that. does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, so most of the videos were talking head with some like, you know, cuts and edits to some other, you know, graphics and stuff. But for the most part, it was just talking heads. Yeah, I mean that model makes complete. Yeah. Uh, talking ad videos are probably the most cost effective. You see, like yeah. animated videos that can get yeah ten x twenty x what you described. What's yeah. your take on the animated like infographic style videos? Uh, I mean, they're they're nice, but yeah. for the reasons you mentioned, if you can get talent on on screen, mm -hmm. awesome. I mean, we've yeah. done those transparently. We don't do okay. a huge volume, okay. also because it rarely 
it's like not super cost effective for also for us to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, we do, we'll, we'll give kind of like outline scripts, right. As you kind of describe to make it work. Um, but like that philosophy, I mean, a thousand per, but you still kind of invested deeply in it. Yeah. Clearly. Um, Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we knew that it was an education tool and to stand out in the SERPs to get more mobile clicks. And, and as the program like scaled up, we saw a mobile click from search console, so we're like, all right, yeah, yeah. So we're like, all right, this is looking good. <laughs> yeah. So it's a part of that process, one of the things to round that out that I'm curious about is how did you actually find those unique educators? How did you get in contact with them? <laughs> yeah. What was the process there? Cool, cool. Good question. So um, one guy we actually knew from Nextiva, a past company that I worked with who did video content oh, okay. there. And he was so good that we were like, all right, let's just bring him on for the ride. We knew that was a no-brainer. Um, and, uh, so the reason we went with two video producers is because we were trying to think about like, all right, well, how many videos can one person scale, you know, with the amount of blog content we have, um, we want to really ramp this up. And it might also be interesting to have two different flavors. So it's not like the same guy over and over again, just the talking head at a desk with like a laptop and a cup of coffee. Yeah. You get redundant. Yeah. (laughs) It gets a little redundant. Yeah. Yeah. So there was actually, um, a nice kind of, you know, yin and yang, uh, balance there. We had two guys with some different styles. Um, so finding the other guy was kind of tough. We just actually went to like TikTok and YouTube and just started searching stuff and like looking for people who were impressive. Okay. And, and we we narrowed it down to like a couple people and then we we reached out to them and then you know this one guy was like really hungry to work with us. He said like, yeah, his family got scammed or something like that and like he really believes in what we're doing and wants to be a part of it. Uh, we did a pilot and it was really good and we're like, all right, boom, this is the guy. So now we got our two pieces in place here. Okay. Like, let's just run with it. <laughs> so was it just uh did you find someone with like a huge subscriber count? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He, he so this guy, uh Upton, he has a very big subscriber count on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn. I mean, this guy is just he's a he's a machine. He's a content creation machine. Okay. And, and we we wanted somebody that was passionate about content creation, somebody that lives and breathes this, not some like slow moving corporate video production company that's gonna you know just like not move Nine at steps. the pace we yeah. want. Yeah, we wanted somebody that was gonna just be agile, easy to work with, gets it, can take a script, realize like internalize it, take out the key points, and just boom, go go deliver. What is interesting there to me is like by nature, huge subscriber count would say expensive to me. Was that not the case or Um, we don't got to give this guy's exact pricing, but (laughs) yeah. Yeah. So I think what we did with this guy was we worked out a package where we said, yo, if we do like X amount of videos with you, can we just bundle it in, you know, one rate rather than like one off individual, you know, cost per video, cost per video, like the day rate essentially. Exactly. Exactly. So we did it as like a bundle package to like, you know, basically give him more predictability into his business and give us a benefit and it's just one lump cost rather than, you know, doing it the day rate, for example, which would be a lot more costly. It would be more expensive than day rate. So you- Yeah, j- just like well, yeah, like his his day rate for a one off project was like very expensive. Oh, okay. Yeah, because so he- you sorry, instead of per video, instead of day rate, you got to what was the model? It was just let's do twenty five videos for this cost. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. No matter how long if it took four days. Yeah, yeah, because because yeah. because also the thing about these videos is we knew they would be like five minutes max each. Okay. So he he knew how long it would take him to do like x amount of videos and like he could knock them out in you know x amount of time. Oh, okay, so it wasn't that tough. Yeah, yeah, okay. it, was, it wasn't that tough. So yeah, it, look, it was still expensive. Like most companies would look at how much we spent on video and say, "Damn, like I, I we can't justify it." But you know, we we knew that. Also, here's the other thing I'll say too. Um, when my identity was stolen. Um, I, I, I thought deeply about those feelings that I had during that moment, fear, terror, uh, anxiety, worry, right? Like, how do you convey that, uh, in a display ad or how do you, how do you, how do you convey that in writing? So it's not always that easy. Mm. So you need video for a, for a subject matter like this to really convey your point across to the audience and make them feel um, you know, those feelings that, that you feel that once, desire you know, that, yeah, that's exa- <laughs> that, 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 that's a good one, but, but yeah, man, like we also spent a lot of time studying, uh, you, um, uh, uh, news reels on YouTube. Hmm. So like, uh, you know, you know, like Fox five news, old grandma got scammed by, you know, young impersonator trying to be her grandson. Like, <laughs> but we looked into all those things and we're like, man, like if we can build like some kind of like 
emotional component to this, I think it's going to be powerful. So nice. Yeah. One, uh, one other thing you mentioned on the article that was a big part of your success was the idea of pain point SEO. Could you yeah. kind of describe that, how that factored in? Yeah. Yeah. So like <clears throat> when you listen to sales calls, you can really get into this really well. And, uh, we were a customer of gong. Um, yeah. so it made it really easy to just start typing in like, um, you know, short tail head phrases into the transcription tool and finding, oh, you know, nice. yeah, Love that. yeah, 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 it was awesome. So we could find like, for example, like how often does dark web monitoring come up or dark web in general? How often does that come up? We found that like 30% of calls, a, a customer was saying, I got a, a notification from like a dark web. People know dark web as a term. I thought yeah. you were going to say not at all. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we would find that people people would say things like, "I think my social security number's on the dark web." Oh, okay, wow. <laughs> and then like we would we would hear like the you know the agent say like, "Oh, well, did you get a, a monitoring alert from LifeLock?" And they no, they didn't even alert me. And okay. then that would be a cue like, "Oh, all right, well now we're gonna pounce on this and just you know take take them away." Because a lot of our customers were already LifeLock customers, and they would switch. Does Gong? Uh... I would guess does it do like term frequency? Uh yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. So you That's can see a great you, keyword research. It's the it's the best keyword research. Yeah. So basically all the pain point stuff we we uncovered was through that. We would just we would just spend more time in that than Ahrefs honestly. Like we were just typing identity theft, um uh dark web, uh scam, uh, credit card, social security, um all all those things and we would see and then you can click and go listen exactly to that moment in the call and you can hear exactly the context you can hear like the fear in someone's voice a uh, bank scam was a big a big one where uh, uh veterans scams against the u.s military yeah. and veterans all oh, you know like that is something we probably wouldn't have thought of otherwise because that was that wasn't even covered in like the product marketing customer research materials you know there was a lot of things that even they didn't come up wow. with yeah yeah this is getting me excited i'm like wow i feel like we all need to cancel our hrs <laughs> Sam Russian accounts to just get gong. That's I, pretty, that probably would be more if you had an SEO based on. I would bet I would drive more conversions doing that. You definitely would. Yeah. You definitely would. <laughs> and uh, you know, I think a lot of SEOs are gonna. You know, I know zero search volume keywords and stuff is coming up, but like, I um, I paid a lot less attention to like volume in this program, mm -hmm. and I paid attention as as much as I could to like the pain point stuff, and then also the difficulty. I couldn't ignore that. Yeah, I think yeah, I'd be startup. I'd yeah. be naive to to ignore that. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm LifeLock, I'm ignoring it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm a startup that has no authority, I, you got to pay attention to it. <laughs> you, you just got to. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Is Gong the only tool for that kind of I mean, I know they're real are they enterprise focused? There's got to be some other tools. I think there's I think there's some uh yeah, much smaller um versions of it that mm -hmm. like are more affordable cuz I think Gong is very enterprise and it can, it can be expensive for sure. So I don't know if it's a primary use case for like a content program. Um but um like they they have competitors like Chorus AI and Exec Vision and some others where I think they're it's worth looking at worth looking at yeah 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 I mean definitely always advise our team to listen to sales calls but I love that kind of like this is actually more scalable data driven than like <laughs> listen to two sales calls it's it's a repository yeah yeah so that's that's fucking powerful it's a repository uh, yeah and yeah. if you have customers or clients <laughs> that are using Gong or a similar tool then. Oh man, you gotta get, get access for that. Gotta yeah. get access. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure they'll give it to you. I mean, they they might be apprehensive because it's very sensitive stuff in there. Right. But one thing Gong automatically does, which I like, is it like automatically blocks out sensitive stuff. So if like an agent, customer names, and customer stuff. names, yeah. If even if an agent's like, all right, so um, can you verify your email address? Gong will block out when they start talking about it. Well, nice. Yeah. So yeah. So no personally identifying information is leaked or exposed. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, got to yeah. look into that. Now yeah, I want yeah. Gong for us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's solid. Even if you get it for a short short period of time and then just use that, I mean. Yeah, yeah. I think they say their sales, I think they're, tar I had, I did an intro call with them because I, I love their blog. They have yeah, an amazing it's, content it's, blog. It's very good. Um, yeah. With like sale, if you're a salesperson in any industry listening to this, like read their yeah. their blog. There's like great tips on it. Um it's like the one place I look at, honestly, <laughs> for those things. Nice. Um, so you helped with that, right? Yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm helping with that now. Um, okay. I'm helping them now take their contents like the next level. Okay, nice. Yeah, like they're a company that has really like took advantage of the product-led content model. 
So there was a guy named Chris Orlob in like Gong's early days. What he would do is use the tool to extract insights and create product oriented content around that. So, you know, for example, X amount of salespeople, you know, are successful when this happens on a call, according to Gong stats. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that was brilliant. And, uh, you know, there wasn't SEO, any SEO value to that, but it was massive for like community, social, brand. For sure. And pe it, it caught on, man. People really loved it, shared it um, like crazy. It spread like wildfire. So I don't think Gong would be where they're at today without that. Gosh, so you're helping with the SEO component? Yeah, right now, guess, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that too, but yeah, yeah Gong yeah. Labs was the name of it, Gong right? Labs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, the whole yeah. point is like, hey, we never really thought about SEO until now. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so I'm sure they'll yeah. kill it because of that, uh, partially because of all the links and stuff. Exactly. Of that, and now brand awareness that they have. E exactly, from yeah. those things and yeah. helping out. And I think they have a yeah. pretty easy space, like, to be honest with you, like sales call recordings and mm -hmm. stuff like that, like I don't think it's as competitive as Password Manager. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. So yeah, I I think I'll be able to do some damage. Do, nice, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you talked about being a new startup. Obviously, links are a component of this equation. Indeed. How did you think about link building? Yeah, what was your thought process there? Yeah, so, um, and I'd be curious to get your thoughts on this because I don't know how much it really helped. Like, I, I don't know how to measure this, honestly, but... um. We had a multi-domain SEO strategy. Oh, okay. So there was a site called Identity Guard that- I think I've heard of it. Yeah, that Aura um, also owned. Mm -hmm. And there was another site called Meet Circle, which is a parental controls site that Aura acquired. Okay. So for just quick hit, you know, we need to boost ourselves real quick. Let's use the parental control site to, to link to our, you know, stuff that we need to boost real quick. Let's go to the identity guard site and find relevant anchor text and add some links. That was smart. Yeah. Yeah. That makes so sense. a lot of companies use that model, like Freshworks, you know, they have a multi domain SEO strategy and they, they do that. So that was the first kind of easiest, lowest hanging fruit. Like, let's just get some links. The next phase of it was let's hit up all our affiliate partners. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> in the uh, identity theft space, uh, affiliate is massive. It is absolutely massive. So like security.org, US News, like all those sites. Okay. So we hit them up for links as much as we could. Also some smaller affiliates, we we hit them up for links as well. Um, the Minnesota Timberwolves. So all the all the sponsorship partners, uh, South by Southwest. <laughs> okay, nice. You know, we did an activation. Like, yeah, so yeah. in B2C, they, we don't do campaigns really. We do activations. That's a slightly different terminology. Mm. But like they, they, they don't go to an event thinking, how many leads am I going to get? They go to an event thinking, are we going to make the biggest noise and get the most attention and get the most amount of press? Okay. So uh, we hit up all of our um, sponsorship and, uh, uh, yeah, partners for, for links, basically. Yeah, I like saying partner partnerships are like the strongest links you can get, honestly, exactly. very often. Yeah, um, and they're easy. Easy, Because yeah. they're not going to give you any pushback. So, um, <laughs> so nice. that internal linking was a huge part of this. Mm -hmm. So we had actually, in the navigation of the site, a master FAQ. So a master FAQ about um, not just like the product and like how does this work, how does that work, but also things like um, all things pertaining to the content categories that we were creating. Okay. And we would link uh, from that master FAQs page directly to the content pages we were creating. So I believe that helped a little bit because given that it's in the master navigation and it's prominently placed on the site, you know, it's got to give some good link authority to those other you know longer yeah, tail pages. Yeah, for sure. So so internal linking as well. And then the, the, the component that's hard about link building is actually like finding uh, people who are not in our immediate friend circle to help us out. So that required us doing um, a little bit of outreach, not, not um, like cold outreach through, through um, email or anything, but just like using my connections on LinkedIn, uh, the, oh, okay. the, the CEO's connections mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, even like the, uh, the investors and the and the board members, they were some very powerful dudes, and we we leveraged them for links. Um, uh, getting links from investors, like some of those, have, they'll have like a portfolio page, yeah. but not linked to Aura. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. Like <clears throat> hot, super high authority. Links. Super high authority links. Yeah. So so the investors were this group called Wonderco, mm. and it was founded by this guy Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was like the former chairman of Walt Disney. So mm -hmm. imagine his connects. Nice. Pretty insane. Yeah. So we got basically links from all the Wonderco partner sites um, and portfolio sites, which was really big. Nice. And um, I, I'm trying to think what else we did for links. Um, yeah, just your classic like, you know, homies in, in adjacent verticals, like, okay. you know, yo, we're doing this, can you help us out? You know, 
blah blah blah. That kind of thing. That kind of scale thing. it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, there wasn't any link magnets, unfortunately. <laughs> um, we didn't get to a point where where we created any tools or calculators or stuff like that. I would have liked to. Um, no infographics. I would have liked to do that, but we didn't. But anyway, it was a more of a one off kind of you know laser uh, targeting focus approach. Yeah, focus approach. Yeah. So and kind of added up. Yeah, and it added up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think the final thing I'll say about it, though, it was um, a lot of boosting from PR. So when you're a B2C company that's heavily funded and you got an investor like Jeffrey Katzenberg, um, <laughs> you, you're going to get some massive PR. And so they got a lot of links from, like, massive sites. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. They were mostly, like, homepage links. But that's that's still good because we, need, yeah. we needed that for just general site authority and, and growing the, the, the brand. Um, and I, and I imagine that that helped. I don't know how to measure that, you know, with a fine tooth comb and say that this had X amount of ROI, but that had to have helped because I know other sites aren't getting stuff like that. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've seen examples, uh, like when someone has a great product and it's, especially in verticals where links are hard to come by, like finance. Right. It's, it almost seems like you can't, you almost win. I'm sure you win because you're getting money, but in some ways the funding (laughs) rounds, press push gives yeah. you the links to be able to rank for stuff it, it, it helps it helps yeah. a lot and we we actually uh kind of reversed engineered some of like life locks like links and stuff mm-hmm. and we saw like it was mostly like press and like you know uh whenever they re- announced a, a quarterly report or a, a financial earnings statement like they would get a lot of press yeah and that's just the way it goes yeah and security we see i mean a lot of people taking definitions of things like there's so many like random what is a vpn Mm -hmm. whatever Mm -hmm. um maybe that was a one for you uh in scoring or maybe actually it's higher but don't go to market (laughs) with that yeah we talked about a little bit yeah yeah that we we looked at vpn and password manager and we just came back to our boss and just said yeah like nah (laughs) like come on let's not let's not go (laughs) maybe that's the year 10 strategy or something yeah 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 yeah. like this is i'd be curious to get your take on it but a lot of companies now are multi-product companies you know they may have evolved from being mono product to multi product Mm. or they were just multi product out the gate but should you go uh to market for these individual product lines or should you just dominate the flagship product and then cross sell and expand yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we we have clients right now, for example, that like had market dominance in one category, right. had to keep growing, right, and naturally are struggling in the other category, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and that's going to also pour pull from your one category. I don't know that there's a universal answer. It probably is like how dominant <laughs> you potentially can be, or how yeah. good your product is. That probably could inform that. Yeah, uh, but if you're not dominant, yeah, you're not going to have a good time. Yeah. Probably having the content, that's one thing I sometimes, like we had a f- few clients in crypto, mm-hmm. less recently for, I wonder why. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not that crypto's tanking. Yeah, anything. yeah, <laughs> that might be part of the reason. Uh, but one of the things we'd recommend often for them is like, we would do, you should do like, what is Bitcoin? What is Ethereum? We're not going to rank for that, right. but that makes sense to be on your site. Right, right. So that would maybe be the one argument. That's the justi- yeah. justification yeah. there. And, you know, it's it's like you can distribute that content in other ways aside from SEO. You know, you for can, sure. You can use that in your um, customer emails, onboarding flows, right? Uh, social, stuff like that. Site architecture, hopefully people Side can find it. Yeah, right, naturally right, Naturally when they're right. looking at that product page, things right, like that. Yeah. yeah. You want to guess what was our number one uh, sign-up driving asset? Uh, I have no idea. Aura versus LifeLock. Wow. <laughs> Not surprised. Classic Not... SEO, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Classic All SEO. All the versus pages. Do you have a specific uh, – did you hide those on your site architecture or how did you get that across the line? You know, I I wanted to do something – all right, so this this company called uh, Customer IO. The navigation, the navigation's brilliant. They actually took a very bold move and put all their versus pages in the ma- in the main nav, main, top nav, top nav. Wow, I've wow. never seen that That's done before. Gutsy. That's gutsy. They they come and you know, fist to the yeah. face with that. <laughs> you know, no fear. Um, so I didn't get buy in on that, but um, <laughs> I, I tried that. Yeah. I, I, I tried. Yeah, yeah, I I tried to get it at least to the footer, and they're like, nah. Nah, they, they didn't want to do it. Even the footer. Yeah. yeah. So um, just through classic internal linking, I was able to get it to rank. And, you know, it wasn't super competitive. So, um, yeah, got it cool. to rank anyway. Yeah, one, I, I often point to HubSpot. They have theirs linked as, like, software comparison library. Okay. I think – I mean, it's a two-sided coin. One thing I like it 
is it's it's still linked internally site wide, mm-hmm. but sort of makes sense, but probably isn't going to get a ton of clicks. Mm-hmm. So it's like a you're getting internal linking equity to all those pages. Yeah, uh, and yeah. I, that was their approach felt uh, good to me. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, I'll have yeah. to check that one out. Um, yeah, but that's that was cool. a good one. That's cool. Well, we hit a lot of good stuff. You obviously have a great case study in Aura. Uh, thanks, man. <laughs> Anything we did not miss, or you would, or we didn't t- cover, you would leave people with? I don't know, man. I, I think this this episode was great. You know, I, I really enjoyed the talk. Thanks yeah, for inviting enjoyable. me. Um, I don't know. I guess like one takeaway I would just say is like, uh, if you're in a competitive category and you know you're gonna have an uphill battle um, ahead of you, like just prepare for the fight. You know, just mentally. Just realize, like, damn, this is going to be a grind. But, um, you know, make, make it a challenge to yourself. That's kind of what I did. I was like, yeah, I want to challenge myself. You know, I want to see if I can actually carry this out. Um, and so that was kind of a weird motivator for me. But um, Just a challenge of. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fun. that When you yeah. start from scratch when you start up, that's a great personal case study. Yeah. That uh, it's great working with great big brands, for sure. But there's yeah. a little less, like, was it me? Yeah, ex- <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, I always like to think of myself as kind of like an underdog. Like uh-huh. even in my life and career, I've always kind of sided with the underdog. I never joined a category leading giant. Yeah, you know, I just sense. I don't know. I just I'm not cut out for that. It's anyway. Not your brand. It's not, yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't know if they'd want me honestly, but um, anyway. well, you're in the perfect position now. We were talking about it. Marketing yeah. advisor, uh, yeah. definitely recommend you. Uh, got some great experience in B two C, but for sure everything. I don't know, you'd say you're specialized in B2B or what's your kind of specialties? Yeah, I would say like I've been in B2B much longer. Obviously, this uh, this crazy run in B2C was like a life changing and career changing uh, moment for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I learned a ton, a lot of failures, but some some nice outcomes as well. But uh, yeah, B2B, I'm pretty good. Nice. Well, I really suggest everyone finds you on LinkedIn. Uh, great content there uh, that you posted you. on this. We'll link to this on LinkedIn. Cool. Uh, so highly recommend that. And yeah, really appreciate you coming down. Hopefully, you come back and definitely uh, come to Austin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got more barbecue to eat, and uh, I want more come. bad feelings to have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, thank you, Ross. Appreciate yeah. it.